Hi, I'm Chris Parkin. Welcome to Gunmark TV. This is the Savage Impulse Elite Precision in 308. Now this is, as you can see, a totally precision rifle designed for PRS shooters, perhaps a little bit of long range, depending on what cartridge calibre you have it in. But I've been reviewing it in 308, and I suspect for the PRS market, the 6mm or 6.5 Creedmoor is going to be the one that is the most interesting one for them to use. But it is also available in larger calibers like 300 Win Mag, 300 PRC, 338 Lapua Magnum, and 6.5 PRC as well. So you've got quite a versatile range there for the long distance precision shooter. Savage button rifle all their barrels and this stainless steel unit's a Palmer profile at 26 inches or 660 millimeters long. It's screw cut 5 8 by 24 and there is a muzzle brake included but if you want to you could take that off and use a moderator or you don't have to use it at all. Overall length is 48.75 inches or 1240 millimeters. Length of pull is just from 14 to 15 and a half inches, which is 355 to 394 millimetres. Savage use a barrel nut system, which means you can accurately headspace the barrel using go and no-go gauges. And if you wanted to, you could have multiple barrels to work on this action, perhaps with different bolt faces. Talking about the bolt, this is the impulse action. So it is a straight pull action. Go forward like that. This is a safe dry fire. Click, the bolt goes off. It comes straight back, forwards, and you're ready to fire again. If you don't fire, you need to press the button on the back just to unlock and open the bolt. But that goes forward again, ready to fire again. There is also a safety catch, it's a tang mounted safety, just under the scope at the back here, forward for fire, rear for safe. The left side bolt release catch is there, allows you to take the bolt out, and one of the advantages of this bolt system is you can actually swap the handle right to left side if you want a left handed rifle. It's a push feed bolt face with a manual ejector system, so it will eject as hard and as fast as you pull the bolt back. But if you don't want to eject it a long way, pull the bolt back slowly and it will just pop the round out gently. There's a single extractor claw on the right side here and the bolt is locked into battery using these ball bearings which expand outwards into a rebate around the chamber to make sure the gun stays locked closed. Savage use their AccuTrigger system on this rifle and just to show you it's in operation that means you've got the inner safety blade and the outer blade there. I personally find these work just like a two stage trigger to me with that being the first stage and this is safe dry fire, that being the second stage. The trigger is adjustable between one and a half and four pounds, which is 700 to 1800 grams. And just to give you an idea of the weight that this factory rifle has been supplied at, we'll weigh this now. That breaks at 1178 grams, which is two pound 9.6 ounces. While the rifle's on its side, I can show you the magazine. It's a 10 round AICS magazine system, which is the Accus International Chassis System. These are quite common. You can easily get them in five or 10 round units in both steel and polymer. This is a steel one that's supplied, but I would say that the access to the magazine well just needs a little bit of precision to it because it doesn't have an enormous chamfered entrance to it. So you do need to line it up quite carefully, but once it's in place, it slots lock solid in place and you've got an ambidextrous release on the front of the trigger guard, which is accessible 
accessible either side of the rifle. Scope mounting is super simple, it's got an inclined 20 mm wave Picatinny rail incorporating the action which means you've got secure, reliable on-off scope mounting if you need to and Picatinny is of course one of the world's most simple systems to work with. The rifle is supplied in an MDT chassis and you've got all the M-lock system on the sides to add any balancing weights or other accessories you want. There's also M-lock on the underside as well as a full length Arca rail which you can use to add a bipod or the tripod which you've seen me shooting from in the videos. The front of the action has a solid barricade stop so you can load into the barricade and make sure you get a good steady aim. I shot the rifle from a low mounted tripod system, a bit like a bipod, to do the group shooting and the accuracy testing. I've also shot it standing from sticks and I've shot it from a rest bag from the top of an actual barricade. The stock incorporates thumb shelves on the right or left sides identically so if you go for a vertical grip like that you've got accurate control of the trigger. Interestingly, the MDT pistol grip is actually longitudinally adjustable, so you can change the reach to the trigger from the throat to the trigger blade very slightly to give you that little bit more comfort and a better precision fit on the trigger for more control. Looking at the back end of the rifle now, you've got a vertically adjustable cheek piece which is quite slim so it fits under your cheekbone without displacing your jaw. It's also been coated so it doesn't draw the heat out of your cheek and it's more comfortable because I've been shooting this rifle in some quite cold conditions and that added a lot of comfort to the rifle. It's vertically adjustable, you've got lock screws on the side here and you can adjust it with a manual vertical screw like that, space it exactly where you want it and lock it in position. You've also got the opportunity underneath to move it laterally as well so you can get the perfect head alignment behind the scope to suit your face. I think that's a great system. Length of pull is similarly adjustable with locking dials here and a screw thread there to change length of pull. The butt pad on the back is a solid rubber unit, locks into your shoulder and it's also vertically adjustable to make sure you can get the ideal comfort for your shooting positions. Obviously at the moment we've got it in use with a scope on and mounts which add about a kilogram to the overall weight. That overall weight is 6.2 kilograms for the rifle alone and that's 13.7 pounds. So you might not need as many balancing weights as you think you're going to use. But I will say this, the weight does help absorb the recoil. Even on a 308 I can watch bullet flight quite easily on a target at 200 meters. With smaller cartridges like the 6 or 6.5 mm Creedmoors that recoil will be even less and you'll be able to see even more of the bullet flight. Although conversely 308 does disturb more air as it flies so you do see a little bit more air disturbance and therefore bullet trace in flight. I've enjoyed shooting the rifle, it's certainly very functional for what it needs to be. It prints groups on paper like you wouldn't believe and it's definitely got the velocities and the consistency to make sure that if you've got good ammunition you're going to hit those targets at long range. The cartridge you choose is definitely going to be your choice. I don't think anybody's going to pick a 308 for a precision rifle competition use. They're going to be the 6 and 6.5mm cartridges. But it does fundamentally show the ease of use and the comfort that this rifle delivers to you and how easy it is to shoot. Not all shooters like Savage Acker triggers, but I get on with them quite well and I find them a good compromise between a light crisp pull and making sure you don't enter too much into the liability culture in the US. I got on very well with the stock. I particularly like the cheek piece with the adjustability on it for both vertical and lateral positioning of your head behind the scope. It means you get immediate access to a vignette free scope picture. The butt hook means you can plant it well into your shoulder and there's, there's M-lock on the underside if you wanted to add a monopod. One thing I would say though is it's quite angular and because it's aluminium so wear your shooting gloves on a cold day because it really does draw all the heat out of your hand. But the insulating layer on the cheek piece does stop it drawing it out of your face. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review. Please like, subscribe, comment and click the notification bell to keep track of the regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.